How about leveraging your small displays to craft a larger display to automatically span your work? With my new Arduino library, transforming individual screens into a unified virtual display is not only achievable, but remarkably simple and intuitive. This allows you to use the familiar Adafruit GFX graphics functions across a larger canvas without having to manage individual displays in code. Here, I am using the full canvas to show the text virtual display. Whether working with fonts, shapes, or vibrant colors, the possibilities are now magnified. Here, I am using round rectangles on a background and adding a circle flashing on the screen. The beauty of this library is its flexibility. It works with any number of screens you have, allowing many configurations to automatically span Adafruit GFX graphics functions. Here, I reuse the same code and adapting it just a little bit to use the larger display now available. Here's a setup with four screens in a row. Notice how the images span across the screens. They're displayed with the same resolution as our created virtual display, maintaining their clarity and detail. In just a moment, I'll guide you through the simplicity of setting up your screens and using this new library. It's designed to effortlessly manage your screen layout, transforming them into a larger, more versatile display platform where you can span any different GFX graphics functions. It empowers you to focus on what you want to create rather than getting bogged down in the complexities of managing multiple displays in code. Here is the game of life. This isn't just any rendition. It's built using Adafruit GFX native graphics functions. It's all rendered beautifully across our virtual display. And this is a random generated maze. Watch as it not only creates a complex labyrinth, but also solves it in real time. And for a bit of nostalgia, here is the pawn game. Here's a simulation of the iconic Tetris game. The computer is not very good at it. Each block moves across the small displays without having to manage them in code. All is taken care by the library. You focus only on creating your graphics on the large virtual display. You can even use other types of SPI displays, like these round screens. Everything you have seen so far is available to you as example in the library. You can use them as starting point and improve them. The library currently supports 16-bit color SPI displays like this 240 by 240 pixels resolution model. I also have this other type of round SPI display with the same resolution. I have put the links in the video description for both of them. Spanning graphics across multiple displays requires a fair amount of memory, so I recommend you use an ESP32-S3 microcontroller like the N16R2 model, which comes with 16 MB of flash memory and 8 MB of PSRAM and offers numerous GPIO pins. PSRAM is required as it serves as the storage space for the images displayed on each screen. I have put the link to this model in the video description. A 240x240 240 240 16-bit color screen takes 112 KB of memory. If you have a grid of 2x2 screens of this type, you will need 450 kilobytes of memory. With the 8 megabyte of PSRAM at your disposal, you're well equipped to handle such demands and much, much more. Now let's look at how to wire the screens to the SP32. We will use the SPI bus for the communication to the screens. Five pins are used for the SPI bus and I will show you where to define them when we look at the code later. Let's bring our power and ground lines. 
every screens will be powered by the ESP32 3.3 volt pin. Let's wire the first screen. The VCC and BL or backlight pins are connected to the 3.3 volt line and the ground pin of the screen to the ground line. The other pins are connected to the SPI bus. Let's take a closer look. So the RST pin of the screen is connected to pin 4 on the SP32. DC pin to pin 2, SDA pin to pin 13, and the SCL pin to pin 18. You don't have to connect the MISO pin of the screen. In my case, my screen don't have a MISO pin. That doesn't matter since the library include the ability to read the virtual screen. And we are going to see in a moment how to connect the CS pin. The other three screens are connected in the exact same way. Now let's remove the SPI bus to better see how to connect the CS pins of each screen. Each screen must have its unique chip select pin so the ESP32 can talk to them separately. So for the first screen, its CS pin is connected to pin 15 on the ESP32. The CS pin of the second screen is connected to pin 7. The third screen has its CS pin connected to pin 6. And the last to pin 16. To use the library in your projects, open your Arduino IDE and in the library manager, search for virtual screen and install it. It will also install the TFT SPI library. It is used as a driver for screens. The library comes with several examples on many different types of screen layout. You have examples for two screens in a row. Here for a 2x2 two two grid of screens, two screens on each row. Here an example for six screens, three on each row and examples for four screens in a single row. The library supports various screen layouts as long as all screens have the same resolution. Let's see how you can do it by opening the text example. You must configure your driver for your display in the TFT SPI library. Right click on the header of the library and select go to definition. Be patient, it may take a while to load and appear. Now right click on the TFT SPI header file and select go to definition. Scroll down a little bit and right click on the user setup select header file and select go to definition. In this header file, you must choose the correct driver for your display. In my case, it is this one. You must have just one line uncommented for the driver. The other lines must be commented. You cannot edit the file in the Arduino IDE. You will have to do it outside the Arduino IDE by using Notepad, for example. The file is located in your Documents folder under Arduino, Libraries, and TFT SPI folder. Now right click on this user setup header file to go to its definition. Here again you must uncomment the line corresponding to your display. The other lines should be all commented. There's a final thing to do. Go back to the user setup select and right click on your driver to go to its definition. Here you can change the pins related to the SPI bus. Adjust it to your requirements. The definition you see are the ones I have used for my setup. The CS pin must be defined as minus one because the library will take care of that. We will see that in a short moment. Now let's return at our text example. To use the library, you have to include it at the top of your sketch. Here a font is included in this example. These two global variables are needed and must be declared like that. Now, here is how to define your screen layout. In this example, we have a row of two screens. This is the first screen definition. The first parameter is the chip select for a screen. The second parameter is the rotation of the screen. A value of zero means no rotation. A value of one means a 90 degrees rotation. 2 means 180 degrees and 3 means a rotation of 270 degrees. You can define any screen layout as long as the screens have the same resolution. 
Now let's open the breakout game example. Here you can see that we define a layout composed of four screens, two on each row, each having its own chip select pin. Note that the screens on the second row have a rotation of two, meaning they are rotated 180 degrees. After defining your screen layout, you instantiate the library and call the begin function. After that, you can use any Adafruit GFX graphics functions. You have to call the output function to show the result on the screens. Spanning graphics across small SPI displays has never been more straightforward, effectively broadening your creative canvas for designing games, creating artwork. I'm eager to hear about your experiences with the library, so please share your thoughts in the comments below. Your feedback not only enriches our community, but also contributes to the library's ongoing development. Dive into the provided example, experiment with them, and feel free to enhance and share your improvements. Together, we can push the boundaries of what's possible. Thanks for watching.